On this episode of Pillar Garage, we're going to be reviving the paintwork on this neglected Suzuki Boulevard. Welcome back folks. Today we are working on a 2018 Suzuki Boulevard that has unfortunately been neglected for the past three or four years. Left outside in the rain, never washed, possibly never serviced, but we're rectifying all of those things. This bike belongs to a friend of mine who's currently hiding behind the camera. Would like to remain anonymous because of how filthy her bike was when it arrived here today. So, we're going to start by doing a decontamination on the whole thing. We're going to do some degreasing, we're going to use magma, which is a metal decontaminant, and then we're going to get the bike clean and ready and prepped, and then we're going to start polishing it, and then I will run you through the whole process. Now, first on our list of chemicals is Road Trip Grime Destroyer. This was very kindly given to us by Hammond's Paint. Now, we're gonna spray this on literally every single part of this bike. And then we're gonna scrub it in using a brush. Now, don't spray this onto a chain. That is the only thing you can't spray it on. Give the camera a little looky see with your best blue steel and then hose it on off. Now normally I use a high pressure hose to do this, but you shouldn't. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna pretend like I don't normally do that. Next is Magma. Now this is a pretty cool product that I came across a couple of years ago when it first came out. So basically you spray this onto everything and they claim it won't take your wax off or anything like that. It definitely will, but you spray it onto everything and it's an iron decontamination spray. So Pretty much all of the iron that's stuck to your bike or your car or whatever over the years will turn purple and it breaks down the bond between those little iron particles and whatever they're stuck to. Now as you can see the brake caliper there is all purple, the wheels are purple, everything's purple. So what I like to do after that is then hose the whole thing down with my foam cannon and then I will use a very soft brush or cloth or sponge or whatever and I will then go over the whole thing with that and you give a little scrub and it just helps to break down that bond with a lubricated surface. Let that soak in for a couple of minutes. Helps also take all the dust off the bike before you go and start wiping it. Now, this is what it looks like just with a basic clean. We have not done any polishing, we've not done anything else other than a chemical clean. So we've decontaminated the bike, we've got all the metal contaminants off it. Paint is relatively smooth now, but it has a bunch of scratches and marks all over it. Uh, there's a lot of wear on the side of the tank, which looks like it's from someone's leg rubbing against it. Uh, there is still some oil and some spots that I've missed on the motor, but we'll get them later. So now we're going to start by cutting back the paintwork, and then we will do some wax on it. So, step one, we're going to use the Meguiar's Ultimate Cutting Compound. I like using this because the grit inside it actually breaks down and it becomes a polish. Uh, the reason that I like that is when I'm working on black cars, like the Dodge here, or dark coloured motorcycles with soft paint, you tend to not get many swirl marks that you have to then buff out afterwards. Now I'm going to be using a polisher to apply this, but you can do it by hand, it will just take seven times as long. Alright, now if you've never polished anything before, it is a relatively easy thing to do. So you're going to start off with masking up all of your rubber and plastic surfaces that you don't want polish on. And then you're going to spread the polish all around the pad. I like to wipe it all over the part that I'm polishing as well. It just helps stop it splattering and it also helps keep it consistent. Now I like to put it on the lowest setting. I've got a variable speed, so I put it on one. And again, I slowly work that into the paint to just try and build up a nice even surface of polish. 
and then I gradually increase the speed. I normally don't go above halfway, which on this machine is, I think, five. Um, there's just, unless you're buffing something that's really bad, there's not really any good reason to. The polisher I'm using is what's called a rotary buffer. Now that means it rotates in a circle. You can also get random orbital ones which sort of rotate and vibrate side to side at the same time. Um, basically a random orbital is going to be a lot easier to use and to not get swirl marks, but a rotary buffer is much faster at cutting through paintwork. So if you know how to use one, that's the way to go. So I've got this side of the tank pretty well polished up. Um, there are a couple of marks in it that I can't get out, but I actually think they're dints in the paint. They're not actually scratches. So I can test this theory out. A simple way to check whether you can get a scratch out of your clear coat or whether it's already too late is to lick your finger and wipe it over the mark. And if it disappears, you will be able to get it out. If it doesn't, there's no point trying. That is a real fact. Yep. So watch me just lick your bike real quick. So that one's not coming out, and that's the most minor one. So that is going to be the same for all of them. These actually look like key marks or like dints from um, lines in your pants, the thread mark and stuff. So it's actually like pressed into the paint. It hasn't just scratched it. So there's not really a lot I can do with that. Now, there are some areas like the bottom of this line here, this joint seam and up here around the handlebars that I couldn't get with the buffer because it's too big. So I will be going over that by hand using this. You can get small buffing pads, but I don't find they make a whole lot of difference. This is just fine. And they're cheaper, much cheaper. It's important to do circular motions when you're polishing. The reason for that is you get better coverage, but also the fact that most scratches are straight lines. So by going this way, doing circular motions, you're actually wearing down the scratch, whereas if you go with it, then you're actually helping the scratch. All right, our cut and polish is officially finished. Now we'll go back over with a polish coat, and then we will look at the wax. Now, this does look really good, which is why I like using that polish because it does break down and sort of acts like a polish after it's done cutting, but there are still some very fine scratches that you'll see, and there are also some that I just can't get out at the moment. But, all in all, pretty good for stage one. Now, for our polish layer, we are going to be using the Surf City Garage polishing compound. This was kindly donated to us by Hammond's Paint Swan Hill who have been donating some of our car care and our paint for the High Sun project. Now, this I have only used once before on a black car and it was really good. It actually came as part of a kit, which was their, they call it like a midnight kit or a black something, which is for dark colored vehicles. It came with a polish, it came with a wax and it came with a detailing spray. Um, but yeah, I highly rate it so far. You can apply this by hand, but I still have some swirl marks I want to get out, so I will be applying it with the buffer. Um, I'm going to be using the same foam pad. You should really use a different grade for each one, but I already started with a softer grade, so this will be fine. Wax and grease remover. Get all of the polishing compound and everything off because when you put a wax coating on, you're sealing in your paintwork. So anything that's still on there will stay on there. Now for our wax coating, we are trying something very special. This is the new Hydro Slick Ceramic Coating Hyper Wax by Chemical Guys. 
This is not endorsed. I've never used it before, but I saw the bottle sitting there on the shelf and I've used some of their other products and I thought, yeah, what the hell, we'll try it. Now, on my own vehicles, I wouldn't use something like this unless it was on one of my daily drivers or something that I didn't want to have to look after. I prefer to use a conventional wax. Um, they don't last as long, but I believe they give you a better shine. However, as this bike was neglected for the last four years, I've decided to go with a long-lasting ceramic coating, which means it'll only have to be washed with a hose, or very gently washed with a car wash or whatever, that will look amazing. So, let's see how it looks. Oh, one more tip. I was going to buy the Meguiar's spray ceramic coating, um, but I saw this. Now, the spray ceramic coating is probably better for an application like this because I would spray the entire bike the seat, the engine, the wheels, everything. So that it would all be ceramic coated. This, I'm gonna to have to wipe onto everything so it might not get into as many places. But in theory, it should give a better shine. So, we'll see. I get my bitches down in Georgia. Isn't it bitches? No, I get my peaches. The song is called Peaches. Pretty sure it's I get my bitches down in Georgia. I will literally prove you wrong on this one. And you don't have to, because I'm pretty sure I already know that I'm wrong. Mm. Does require vigorous shaking. Before you. This is like thick. Oh shit. Just ate it. Yeah, this is like. Oh, it's like fucking slime. What the hell? Literally jelly. Can you see this? It's. It's jelly. But sure. Flying it without reading the instructions, cause we don't do that shit. Da, 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 da. Wow, it's um, it's weird. It is weird. I need to actually read. Apply it to a cool clean surface. Squeeze four to five dabs onto a cream like fiber. Okay, well, I'm doing it right. It says to let it. It's actually hard to apply because it doesn't want to stick to the paint. But it's like it's hydrophobic already. It won't stick to the paintwork to be applied. But I think that's just because I've polished the crap out of it and it's such an expert job that yeah, nothing will stick to it. All right, now it says to leave this for two to three minutes. What does it say, one to two? One to two, not two to three, but that's fine. I'm sure two to three would be okay. So I'm polishing or buffing off this hydro coating stuff. And I tell you what, it's bloody hard to get off. I mean, I maybe left it for another five minutes longer than I probably should have, but still. It's leaving all these little like specks. It is coming off, but it's, I don't know. I mean, I guess the upside to this is that you can tell that it's gonna stick to your paintwork for a while, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to do a bit of a long-term review, I think. I don't know if I would use it again. And at $75 a bottle, it wants to be pretty bloody good. I've definitely used better waxes, like shinier waxes before. It is good. And I'm sure that considering what we like, what we want it for is that long-lasting, like low-maintenance wax. It's probably not bad, but for me, I wouldn't probably use it on anything. I'd rather just do it once a month and have like really shiny stuff. Jesus, like this is. I've used a whole microfiber, and I've only done half the tank. Imagine doing a whole car. You'd need like a 50 pack of these things, and they'd all just be going in the bin afterwards. So I'm making the executive decision that I want to put another wax over top of this. Now this is just a wash and wax anywhere sort of situation. I'm just going to use that to help as a lubricant to get this excess hydro coating crap off because when I say it doesn't want to come off, I mean like it does not want to come off. And then once we're happy with that, I'm going to use a conventional style wax over the top of this because I feel like I can get a better shine. So I'm hoping that the 
hydro wax will, or the ceramic wax stuff will make it last a long time. And the wax over the top of that will give it a really good shine for the next, you know, couple of weeks, couple of months, that sort of thing. Now we have some choices. Firstly, a, another Hammond's Paint Swan Hill sponsored item, the Black Edge. This is that wax I was talking about before. It is amazing. Or the P21S by Concourse Look. I've had this for years. I only use it on the Dodge. It is absolutely the best wax I've ever used in my life. But in summer, you get maybe three washes out of it and you have to reapply it. So it is not good for something that you drive often or that you clean a lot, which is where this comes in. I did my V-Star with this and I did it once every six months and it looked amazing. Now ideally you should use a applicator because they're not absorbent like a microfiber is. But if you don't have one, a microfiber works fine. Now, the trick with this stuff is to apply the hell out of it. Building up a good layer of it. And then you let it sit until it dries and goes matte, like that's doing. And then you just buff it off. It also smells really good. Oh yeah, that's the shine we're looking for. That's the shine we're looking for. Okay, here is a nice shiny exhaust tip that I've just put on the bike. Here is a nice st uh, stainless guard. And here is the rest of the exhaust with a little bit of hydro ceramic wax, blah, 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 longest title in the world stuff. So really I wanna try and get that, excluding the fact that it's got that decolorization. I wanna get rid of the pitting and make it look like this. I also want to get the rest of the chrome all shiny. Now, generally I would use Autosol, but Chemical Guys also had a metal polish, so I thought I'd give that a go. This is the metal polish I got from Chemical Guys. Again, not sponsored, I've never used it before, so we will be reviewing it now. I just picked it up because it was there and some of their other products have been pretty good so far. The little seal is stuck inside the box. Um, user experience currently has been no good, but you better make up for it by being the best goddamn metal polish. Look at the swan. So I do have a drill attachment that I bought to do this, but I was really hoping I wouldn't need to use it. And it looks like, for the forks at least, I'm in luck. User experience, solid two out of 10, so far. I'm going to try this little dude up on the exhaust because I'm pretty sure I could get that by hand. I just don't want to spend the rest of my week sitting here doing that. We have waxed the seat, we have waxed and polished the tank, and it looks freaking awesome. But there is dust all over the bike from polishing it with a couple of splatter marks. Still need to do the wheels. And unfortunately, 
You might have noticed that it had a different exhaust on it, but it was too loud. I took this one off, hoping that we'd find some beautiful, amazing sounding motorcycle, like we did with the Royal Enfield. But we just had like an AK-47 going off in my ear all the time. So, we have reverted back to the original, but possibly in the future we will change that to something a bit less aggressive, but a bit less jetsony as well. Anyways, next step is we're gonna give it a quick wash and you're gonna go over it with the foam cannon. I just wanna go over, get all the dust off it, any little bits, and then we will dry it, and then I will show you the finished product. Josh, don't do that shit. Knock it, boots broom on Mogli. When I pop out like a lightning. Polish, briefcase, no wallet. Just blew a bag like Scotsman, kept that. In the AM going real fast. UK, honey, at the drill that ponds me. Bailed out, no conflict. Might have said I love her, but I never made a promise She wants see, told her nothing in a blossom Badging me for info at the ship of the Wisconsin Only good for the lozenge My whole contact list said it, I don't even want it Sing, show the jet love, but it never meant much Never make decisions off a head rush I've been down to 10 bucks IRS kept track for 10 months Said to switch, I went about it Dues paid, collected all the loose chains That I had left, blew it on on a new game all right guys, that is the end of the video. Unfortunately, it got dark before I could finish filming. Um, I had to kick Ash out so that she'd get home at a reasonable hour. But I hope you got something out of the video. If you do have any questions about the products that I've used or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions or something that you would have done differently, I'd love to hear about it. Always open to learning new things. I have a little sign here. This sign it's from Hammond's Paint Swan Hill, who have kindly supported us through this video with our detailing products and have continued to support us in other projects and other videos with paint products. That sign just fell over. They can make you custom paints, they can sell you cleaning products, they can just give you general advice. So, Hammond's Paint Swan Hill, hit them up, ask them a billion questions and they will definitely help you. Also, while we're on the topic of things, we have a website. If you would like to support our show or just want to see some more stuff, go check out our website. It's peelartgarage.com.au and we have a second channel if you want to see behind the scenes, vlogs, extra stuff that we didn't think was really relevant for the main channel. Anyways, thank you again for watching. Like the video if you got something from it. Leave us a comment and we will see you on the next one.